I'm reading this very long rant from Gregory Douglas because uh, I believe every word of it deserves to be read because of his service. Um, and it couldn't have been easy for uh, Gregory to write this. Um, I thank you, Greg, for sending this in. My name is Greg Douglas, and I am a Marine Corps veteran of the Persian Gulf War, also known as the Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. I was in country for seven months and was exposed to oil fire smoke, burn pits, the nerve agent sarin, and other toxins. I thought I made it through the war unscathed. I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer approximately 10 years after my deployments to Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Somalia. Although it is a latent disease and I was negative for the genetic markers and had no family history of breast cancer, when I first applied for VA benefits, I was denied because I didn't have symptoms while in the core. Because of the threat of edema, I could no longer work in law enforcement. The whole reason I fucking joined the military in the first fucking place. The PACT Act includes reproductive organ cancer, and I was so hoping my two mastectomies would finally be recognized and compensated. But bre breast cancer is only for women because I happen to be a male, even though I had the exact same exposures a woman would have, I do not fucking qualify. I never thought I would say this, but I have been sexually discriminated against what the ever-loving fuck? And I've read up on this. It is the exact same cancer affecting the exact same breast tissue. The only difference is men don't fully develop milk ducts. That's fucking it. So, hello. What the hell am I missing? After recovering from the breast cancer treatments, surgery, chemo, radiation, more chemo, and another surgery, I started having phantom pain. It was mostly in my legs without having any physical trauma and would last anywhere from five minutes to several hours. The pain progressed, affecting more parts of my body and for longer durations. The VA diagnosed me with Gulf War illness, which in my case is mostly fibromyalgia, agonizing, aching pain all over my body severe depression, as well as digestive problems, including irritable bowel syndrome and chronic abdominal pain. My pain now is constant. Any movement increases my pain, as does standing and sitting upright. I spend most of my time in my recliner watching TV while my brain leaks out of my fucking ears. The VA in Connecticut offered me inclusion into a study of the effects of ketamine infusions to treat fibromyalgia and PTSD. The treatment was an infusion of high-dose ketamine, lidocaine, and magne magnesium infused over two hours. Treatments would then be every three to six months as needed. The treatment was a massive success. I was pain-free for three months. I was able to completely resume my active lifestyle. It was a fucking miracle. And then the program anesthesiologist left the VA, and no other anesthesiologist was willing to do the treatments. For those not following along, the military it exposed me to a fuck ton of toxic shit that fucked me up. The VA found a treatment that was fucking working, and then they fucking snatched it away. But I'm not done. So I moved to Massachusetts for a new career. In meetings with my new VA primary care doctor, I was told the pain intervention clinic was doing ketamine infusions. She referred me, but the anesthesiologist would not listen to a fucking word I say said, nor could she be bothered to look at my fucking record. So after only giving me low-dose ketamine infusions over 30 minutes, she fucking declares that I failed ketamine treatments. I shit you not. 
My record says I fucking failed the treatment. Not that the treatment was not fucking helping me because she can't fucking get the infusion right. After losing my mind and seriously increasing my pain level from the stress, I finally get another anesthesiologist. And this time he actually listened to me and read my letter, my record from Connecticut. Fucking amazing. And then he fucking leaves the VA. And once again, no one is willing to continue the treatments because fuck me once more with that big green weenie. I so thought that would end after I got out of the military. What the fuck was I thinking? My pain continued to get worse. I very purposefully chose an apartment complex that had an indoor pool. The only way I can move without pain is in water. I moved in at the end of January 2020, and the indoor heated pool was down for maintenance. But I was assured it would be back in operation very soon. Then the pandemic hit, and I completely understood why they kept the pool closed until MA allowed indoor pools, Massachusetts that is, allowed indoor pools to reopen. But of course, the management had not gotten the pool fixed. Three years later, the pool is still not fucking open, as they still have some kind of chemical problem they just can't seem to fix. Any week now, very much like the Orange Turds Infrastructure Week. After four years, I have only been in the indoor pool twice. And one of those times, it was freezing because it broke again. On October 13th, 2022, I woke up in unbearable pain. I couldn't think straight through the pain. I called in sick to work and I have never been able to go back. I was let go in June of 2023. My company has long-term disability, but it's totally fucking worthless. They do not cover, I hurt so fucking bad, I can't fucking function, AKA fibromyalgia. And incidentally, if you lose both hands, the policy only covers for three years because the person's hands grow back? What the absolute fuck? After 13 months, the VA finally approved my total and permanent disability that would increase my benefit from 90% to 100% disabled. That seems like a small amount, but it's actually huge. Over a thousand dollar increase and way more benefits, including dental. I won't go into deeply into VA disability math. I'll just say it doesn't fucking add up. Please tell me how 50 plus 40 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 equals 90%. Huh? During this time, I was also waiting for Social Security disability insurance to get approved. I waited over 13 months for that as well. If my mom had not been there to give me $900 a month to continue paying rent and utilities, I would be homeless. I also could not have kept from starving without the veterans assistance of Bristol County that provided me with food from their veteran food bank. Needless to say, everything else went unpaid. Shockingly, my credit rating tanked. Huh, go fucking figure. So I'm completely fucked with no way out. I cannot walk without excruciating pain. I need a wheelchair to go any distance. And I can't wheel myself because the pain in my arms, hands, shoulders, chest, back is just as bad or worse than my legs, hips, and feet. The pain is truly all over my body from head to toe. So what I really need is a power wheelchair. My doctor gave me the referral to occupational therapy mobility. But the, report, but the apartment I live in, you remember, the one I chose because it had an indoor heated pool, is a sunken first floor apartment. So there is at least four steps to get into my apartment. You can't get a power wheelchair from the VA into my apartment. So they will not authorize one. On top of that, my vehicle cannot be modified for wheelchair access. I stupidly chose an SUV 
instead of a minivan because I should have known at the time I bought my vehicle, right? Huh? Fuck no. The best they can do is a power assist wheelchair and a lift on the back of my vehicle. So just have to remove the battery pack, the backrest, the seat, fold up the chair, maneuver the chair under the lift, hold the switch while it raises and locks in place, and then do the opposite when you get to the destination. And of course, back to taking it apart to go fucking home. And after all the pain and misery to put it together, I still have to move the wheels to activate the power assist. Better than unpowered, but it still fucking hurts. Not to mention the excruciating pain of sitting upright for more than five minutes. No, the power assist chair does not recline and I cannot get a different apartment or a different vehicle. My credit rating is fucked, remember? No wonder we have a homeless problem. If something fucks their credit, they are permanently fucked. But that was... OT suggestion. Why don't I just move? Sure, no fucking problem, right? Except you can't get an apartment without a good credit score. And I can't go looking for a place. I don't have a wheelchair I can fucking use for more than maybe a half an hour before I need to rest for at least three days. Even if I did have the money for first and last month's rent and to hire someone to pack up all my stuff and move it to a new place and unpack it. So I'm in a total Joseph Heller catch-22 nightmare. I can't get a power wheelchair because of where I live. I can't move because I don't have the wheelchair credit rating. Fuck me hard with that big green weenie again. I'm paying with the rest of my life for proudly serving my country. My military service has robbed me of five different careers including law enforcement, which was my original fucking goal in the first fucking place. I have the physique now of an 80-year-old man. I'm only 54. They robbed me of 30 years of my life. 30 years I will now spend in excruciating pain, sitting in my recliner, trying to occupy my mind, watching YouTube, hoping to hear my hero, Lewis Black, read my rant. I would have loved to hear this live, but I couldn't sit long enough to enjoy. I love this country, and I do not regret serving this country. I just often feel like my country doesn't love me back equally. I want to repeat that because it's really important out of all of the stuff that I read about what people have to go through and that people dismiss over and over, and especially those in charge. I love this country, and I do not reg re regret serving this country. I just often feel like my country doesn't love me back equally. I don't need any more. I'm so sorry this is happening to you, but there's nothing we can do for you. Whew. I just need a little help to get into a place to try to be as comfortable as I can manage for the remainder of my life. Thank you all for listening. Not easy to share, Gregory. Thank you for sharing. Um, if anyone out there knows uh, what group might be able to help Gregory, that would be terrific to get in touch with me or the folks at the website that would be the fastest um and i hope you can i hope someone out there knows uh someone who can help i i don't know i give to certain military um groups and uh but i don't know which one would come under this uh and that's it's just an extraordinary story gregory and um, and I was, uh, I'm proud that I could read it, and I hope I did it justice, and I hope I got the message through. Because people in this country, I mean, and a lot of people, don't get it. Don't even get it. 
you do. And uh, I'm sorry you have to go through this. <laughs>